Almost 69 million people are forcibly displaced from their homes in the world right now. The UN estimates that about 25 million of them are refugees. The refugee population increased by almost 3 million in 2017, the biggest yearly increase that the UN has ever seen. And globally, displacement and refugee disasters are expected to get worse. But you might never even have heard of some of them. So as 2018 comes to a close, we're looking back on a few of these displacement crises that didn't make as many headlines to highlight some of the things you should know. South Sudan is now in the fifth year of its refugee crisis. It started in December 2013, when a civil war broke out just two years after the country achieved independence. What started as a political conflict was exacerbated by ethnic divisions. Estimates show that the conflict has resulted in the deaths of about 400,000 people, according to a report financed by the U.S. State Department. People, because of the conflict, have not been able to go out to the fields farming, which means that uh, many areas of the country could actually face a famine situation. That's Tyril Skarstein from the NGO Norwegian Refugee Council, which works with refugees and displaced persons from around the world. South Sudan, according to the UN, has, quote, the fastest growing and largest refugee situation on the African continent. They estimated a projected refugee population of more than 3 million by the end of 2018, up by more than half a million from 2017. And more than a million of these refugees are children. Despite a peace deal signed by the South Sudanese president and a key rebel leader, the NRC says political will and media coverage of the crisis are both lacking, which could mean it's far from over. The loss of our hope now, that is the international community, if they put the good pressure with those warring fathers, maybe peace will come. If they didn't do it, South Sudan will not be a peaceful country. In Yemen, what the NRC calls the worst humanitarian crisis in the world is still unfolding. Upwards of 22 million people are in need of assistance as a result of the conflict since it escalated in March 2015. That's when a Saudi Arabian-led military coalition, supported by the U.S. and others, started airstrikes on Yemen, targeting a rebel group called the Houthis, who are backed by Iran, Saudi's rival. And 2018 brought a whole new slew of challenges. The UN declared famine conditions in part of the country. More than 100,000 migrants, refugees, and asylum seekers have entered the country, putting an additional strain on already meager resources. And a major cholera outbreak increased, infecting 10,000 people per week. <laughs> Despite the devastating humanitarian impact, says Skarstein, the conflict only really started making headlines as a result of events with broader political implications, like the tragic death of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Recently, U.S. lawmakers have been moving closer toward ending U.S. support in the Yemen conflict, but only time will tell whether the legislative momentum will materialize or whether President Trump will veto the bill in question. In Venezuela, the humanitarian situation has also deteriorated over the past year. There are now upwards of 2.5 million refugees forced to flee the country as a result of an economic crisis that burgeoned in 2014. That was largely started by a fall in oil prices, a commodity Venezuela relies on for at least 95% of its export earnings. In November 2018, inflation hit 830,000% with the prices of things like coffee and bread doubling every few weeks. And they're expected to keep going up. Despite soaring hyperinflation, President Nicolas Maduro's government has not made an appeal for humanitarian aid and has flatly rejected help from other countries. And the rising food prices and medicine shortages have forced people from their homes. They are being received by the neighboring countries, which is very important that uh, these countries continue to keep their borders open. But uh, many of them need more assistance. Uh, we see that uh, a large number of children, for example, are no longer able to go to school. Many fleeing Venezuelans are ending up in nearby countries like Colombia, which has taken in more than a million Venezuelan refugees. But even after escaping conditions in Venezuela, 
These refugees are reportedly often met with threats of xenophobia, sexual exploitation, or violence in the countries they're fleeing to. Es un injusticia lo que está pasando aquí. Uy, bastante. More than five million people have been displaced from their homes in the Democratic Republic of Congo, according to the NRC. Almost nine million people lack access to food and clean drinking water. 2.2 million children are acutely malnourished, and 13 million are in need of humanitarian assistance, putting it almost on par with the number of Syrian citizens in need of aid. This was the result of political and ethnic tensions between armed groups that intensified in August of 2016. Many of them have had to flee not once, but repeatedly. During the first part of the year, more than 700,000 people were displaced. And we heard really more or less nothing about it. Skarstein attributes some of this lack of attention to international fatigue from decades of conflict in the region. As violence has continued to unfold, attention to the crisis has actually decreased, according to the NRC. And in August 2018, the situation became even more dire with the outbreak of an Ebola epidemic in the DRC that has evolved to become among the world's largest outbreaks on record. Even worse, given that it's happening in a war zone. The DRC has received relatively little humanitarian aid and funding, which the country desperately needs to save lives. And finally, to Myanmar, where state-armed forces and Buddhist mobs have committed what the UN has called a genocide against the population of Rohingya Muslims in northern Rakhine state. A year later, more than 700,000 Rohingya have fled to neighboring Bangladesh, fleeing the systematic violence and persecution. Initially, photos and videos of the mass migration flooded Western media. Now, one year later, we see that many of these people are more or less forgotten. But that doesn't mean the crisis has gone away. Rohingya Muslims are still fleeing, and many have been met with a new wave of horrors in the cramped refugee camps in Bangladesh, including the risk of sexual violence, disease outbreaks, natural disasters like flooding, and more. This year, talks of sending them back to Myanmar were met with panic, as many Rohingya Muslims said they would rather die than return to Rakhine State. Despite human rights groups' calls on Bangladesh to stop efforts to repatriate the Rohingya refugees, the government has promised to push on and even refused offers from other countries to take in some of the Rohingya. So why do some humanitarian crises get more attention than others? One possible reason is physical distance. Countries in conflicts that are far away are easier to create a mental separation from, says Skarstein. But that can change once it gets closer to home. Like the Syria crisis, for example, we saw that that crisis really made headlines as soon as Syrians started fleeing into Europe. So the closer people come to us, the larger the chance is that it will receive media attention. But media attention, political will, and economic support don't always go hand in hand. For example, while you probably saw more headlines about Yemen this year than other conflicts on this list, and the country received significant humanitarian funding, the most important factor to end the conflict is political action, which is lacking. And as global refugee crises escalate before our eyes, it's low- and middle-income countries that are stepping up and shouldering most of the burden. The Latin American countries taking in fleeing Venezuelans. Bangladesh hosting hundreds of thousands of Rohingya. Turkey taking in almost three million Syrian refugees. Ethiopia opening its doors to South Sudanese. Developing regions host a staggering 84% of the world's refugees, whereas the U.S. has been slashing its refugee admissions to all-time lows, capping its 2019 quota at just 30,000. Will countries with the most resources keep shirking the responsibility or finally step up? Hey, Facebook. If you've been following us for a while, you know refugee and displacement crises are issues now this world really cares about. We couldn't cover all of them in this video, but we've got a whole bunch of other content from this year that you can check out, including our field report from Kenya, as well as other explainers. Meanwhile, are there other conflicts you want us to do a deeper dive on? Please let me know in the comments, and see you next time.